guys welcome back to Lima Bakes and Beauty. My name is Lima and I create content based on cooking, baking, lifestyle and beauty and also general Q&A videos. Um, if you're new to our family please make sure you hit the subscribe button. We'd love you to join us and thank you for joining us on this video. And get yourselves comfy guys. Today's video is a bit of a long one so make sure you pause the video, grab your snacks, get yourself a, a drink and yeah, just generally get comfy. I've posted a poll on uh, Instagram to see which one you preferred, a relationship Q&A or a general relationship advice video. So obviously the advice video is coming soon. I'm just waiting for someone to join me for that. And today I'm doing the relationship Q&A. So I've got my phone with me and I will be dipping and diving into my phone. Look at the questions that you all asked, there's quite a few. So I'm hoping I can get through them all, give you the best advice that I'd give to anyone else. A lot of the questions were based around my own relationship. So I do feel that it's like a relationship tag video rather than a relationship Q&A with, but without my husband. Let's just get into the video. So the first question is, where did you meet your husband? I met my husband, well, it, I had an arranged marriage. So he was from Pakistan, I was from here. And I went, a year before I got married, I went and met my husband in Pakistan. I spent two and a half weeks there with my mum. In that two and a half weeks, I must have saw him about, oh, about six to seven times. And I really got on with him and yeah we just really hit it off so it was really he was really easy to talk to and really it was really nice next question will we ever see your husband on youtube no my husband obviously is my biggest cheerleader in this it was his idea for me to start youtube but you will not see him on here because he he's a very private person and obviously he's busy in his own field so he doesn't want to be seen on youtube and yeah that's it and i like to keep certain things private so things like my um marriage what goes on in my marriage is quite private to me and also he like i said he's a private person he doesn't want to be in front of a camera and yeah so that's per his personal choice if there was ever an opportunity for him to come on i'm sure i will ask him but i know what my answer will be it'll be no halima it's not going to happen so i that's my answer for you guys. How long have you and your husband been married? 12 years going on to 13. Um, like I said, it was an arranged marriage. I got married at the age of 19 and my husband was in his late 20s. I like the fact that there's an age gap between us both because he has that level of maturity that I, and I had that level of immaturity and he would bring me up and I would bring him down type thing so we could just get on real well next question what was my first impression of my husband god he's tall when i first saw him i was like whoa he's tall i am five foot six but he's like six foot four and i was just like mom what are you doing to me i i did want a tall husband but not that tall i wanted someone who was six, six foot but not six foot four yeah that was my first impression of him i was like the man looks like he's walked out of a village and he's supposed to be some high flying professional the guy doesn't look like that um i remember why i was thinking why is he coming this little bar kameez and obviously because i went to pakistan to meet him it was a bit awkward i wouldn't talk to him all the way until we got to where we were going and my mum was like you need to talk to him I'm all the way through the journey was nudging me it's like say something say something i was like i don't know what to say I'm, i was quite shy and because it's quite intimidating at the same time because you're meeting someone for the first time you don't know what they like you don't want to say anything wrong and you just want it to be easy and flowy but i'm one of those people where if i don't know you i am quite shy and introvert until you speak to me and then once you speak to me i will open up I, I will be an open book with you but um, with him it was that level that this is possibly gonna be your husband Halima and you didn't want to say anything wrong to him and then my mum while we were having lunch in this place we did shopping and stuff and while we were having lunch she walked away and she goes oh I'm going to the bathroom the bathroom took about I don't remember how long it took her to be in there but it was quite a long time for me because I was sat there five minutes twiddling my thumbs and then the next five minutes I was chatting to him and then the, that's when the chat became easy for me next question what do we argue about the most money i like to spend my husband likes to save it's one of those things 
I wouldn't say I'm an addict to shopping, but I like my I like my high flying things, but my husband's one of those people. He rather save the money and buy a quality item. Like he preferred to go to Cheshire Oaks or even to Hugo Boss or something and get what he wants from there rather than rather than going to Amazon and buying something. So he's one of those people where I'm like, oh, the Amazon it costs twenty quid. I'd rather pay that right now than pay two hundred pound later on. Um, next question: What do I think of an arranged marriage? To be honest, my marriage was arranged by my grandma and my husband's father, who passed away. May I like write him gender? To be honest, it's worked for me, or this relationship was written for me. Um, a lot of people think that the type of person that I was like how did she do this for me it was one of those i wanted blessings i wanted the water stuff I, whatever my grandma said to me at the time i was just like yeah grandma you know what you know best i want your du'as in this so if you think he's right for me then yeah i'm all for it my parents weren't happy with me just getting married to someone just like that just to make three four people happy like my parents and my grandma and um, so they were like halima no without you going and meeting him you're not gonna be able to make this decision we're not just gonna let you make the decision just like that so that's when my mum decided to take me um to pakistan to meet my husband because obviously they can't come here so i went there at the age of 18 and i met him and then the following year i got married to him it's a better choice than what the choices i would have given my parents and obviously it was hard work I'm not saying that getting married from Pakistan is perfect. No marriage is perfect whether you get married from here or you get married from abroad. There are always ones that you have to work on. For me, it's worked really well. And obviously, because I've been able to mould myself around him and he's been able to mould himself around me, we just make each other happy because I know that if I was down, he would really pick me up and he's my source of support no matter come rain or shine he's always there for me i can go to him for advice like i said he's my biggest cheerleader for this youtube channel if it wasn't for him i honestly wouldn't be doing this and he's always telling me go for my goals a lot of the stuff that i've recently done is because he's the one that says to me Halima you can do it as long as you have support in your relationship you will be able to achieve next question what is the biggest thing that is needed in a relationship there's not just one thing that's been essential in a relationship there's several things that have got to be essential obviously one is the main thing is compromise and it's always going that little bit away to show them that you care and you appreciate but not lowering your values at the same time so for me compromise is a big thing in our relationship i will not compromise my values or my morals compromise is a big thing in a relationship you need to be able to understand the other person and the other person needs to understand you and you need to be able to meet that little bit of halfway and give each other the guidance and support to make that relationship work i think without any relationship whether you're working whether whether you're a business owner or whatever there's compromises in everything that we do why is the biggest thing that you're going to do whether it's a relationship with your boyfriend or a relationship with your girlfriend or even a relationship with your husband or wife you've got to have a level of compromise because i feel that's where the understanding and the love builds from without that you can't build any foundations for a relationship to grow so that's the first and foremost second thing i would say is your understanding for one another you've got to understand what his goals and dreams are at the same time he's got to understand what your goals and dreams are you've both got to work towards helping each other achieve your goals and dreams there's no point in saying that oh i'm in charge of this and then he's going to say no i'm in charge of this you've both got to be on the same path without being on the same path you're either you're going to fall or he's going to fall and that's when the arguments arise so i think that's another thing you need to understand what he's about and he needs to understand what you're about and you need to be able to meet on the same road so the journey of a marriage or a relationship whatever is based on several things so obviously compromise understanding love and pa compassion well i'm not one to judge any relationship but that's what i base a relationship on you've got to be each other's support i found especially in my own relationship that when i spoke to my husband and shared my concerns he was a person who would pick me up there's been times where i've sat there and i've just cried to myself and my husband's like what's wrong with you you'll come home from work and he'll see these huge bags under my eyes it's like what's wrong with you 
and I'm like, well, this is what's affecting me right now. And you've got to be able to be open and honest with the other, other individual. Next question. Would you recommend living with the in-laws? But what I would recommend is getting your own place. There's nothing, nothing better than getting your own place straight away. You don't want to be wrapped up in the whole family politics. You want your own private space. Um, once I moved out, that's what I realised is I wish I'd moved out straight away. Yeah, you can stay with your pa you stay with your parents or his parents. You'll save money, whatever. But uh, I got to know my husband and our relationship after we moved out. If I still lived with my parents. I don't think I would have done the things that I did, gone the place that I went. And it's also about, and that's where you start to get to know one another. What's his bad habits? What's his good habits? What, how will he support you? How will you support him? I, and it's also about making memories. You may start making memories together about buying your own place, doing it up. Um, you know, yeah, it's hard living on your own right at the beginning but it's a journey and it's fun at the same time because you mess up so many times that you'll burn it on D or you'll, you'll break something and you can joke and laugh about it and even now and I talk about oh do you remember that time when I used to make x y and z and he's like yeah you used to burn everything didn't you and goes I used to hate your cooking but the good good memories that make make us so happy I honestly highly highly recommend if you can find your own place and you can afford it don't spend too much on your wedding put that money towards a deposit for a house go for it if you can afford it just go for it I would highly highly back you up in that next question I'm currently 28 years old I really want to get married however my partner says he's still not ready my parents are asking me to go back home to get married and I thinking is should I stay in this relationship should I wait or should I just turn away my advice to you is if that guy's not interest introducing you now to your to his family what will make you so sure that in a year's time or two three years time that he'll still do the same if a guy can't con show commitment today he can't show commitment tomorrow if he truly loved you he'd say yeah I'm ready for it no matter what, whether he's got the money, whether he's not got the money, he will say, you know what, let's make it happen. So my advice to you is to evaluate your relationship. Look at what the highs and the lows are of this relationship. Are you willing to wait three, four, a year or two more for this guy? who may not even knock on your front door and then you've got this option of either not getting married or marrying a divorcee whereas right now you have this option of going back home yes it might not be the option that you want right now I would say don't close that chapter make him aware that you know what there is this option for me that I can get married somewhere else if you're not willing to give me put that ring on my finger or make things happen for us then don't close that door either go back home and meet this other individual if you can go there get to know this in the other individual see what he's about see if he'd if you think you could spend your life with him because a marriage is not a one day thing it's not pick up today drop tomorrow it's a lifetime and marriage is a sunnah in islam it's like completing half of our iman the longer you're gonna wait the harder you're making things for yourself yet yeah, it could work out for you but also it could be for the worst of you so being able to have both options laid out on the table and then deciding what's good for you and obviously speak to family members who've had arranged marriage speak to speak to family members who've gone through that route of getting I love marriage or doing their own choice see what they're about but also if you know this guy's friend see if there's something underlining his issue right now maybe there's something that's going on that you can support him with push forward in your relationship spending eight years with someone is actually like a marriage but when there's no commitment I would say after three years I would say you should evaluate that relationship I would be wasting my time and in law if I were you maybe you'd find someone else here who knows but like I said our relationships are from Allah Ta'ala who you're going to end up with it might be him might be someone else it's all done and dusted by Allah Ta'ala so whatever it is I hope the choice that you make is the best choice for you and I hope it works out for you I'm a young Seat girl and I've been in a relationship for about two years with my boyfriend and we have just broken up due to an argument and I've recently found out that I'm pregnant. Should I tell him and what shall I do with the child? 
first and foremost yes he needs to know you cannot tell him that you're not that you're pregnant he has a right because obviously half of that is his i don't know how your culture works whether your culture would accept this child or not outside wedlock obviously in islam it is frowned upon and obviously being from a pakistani mark culture it is frowned upon and i'm assuming the Sikh culture is pretty pretty the same and be very mindful of the choice that you make obviously in islam we say you can't kill the child because it's a gift from allah my advice is keep the child obviously it'll be hard to speak it's a topic where you have to share this with your parents because obviously within the there's so much you can keep it a secret for how long you're going to keep it a secret for before you start showing after four or five months you're going to start showing so obviously they're going to start questioning and when you have your morning sickness whatever they're going to notice and obviously a female and this understand another female it's one that you have to share with your family but go to someone that you know that you can trust maybe an elder sister obviously an older brother i wouldn't go down the road of that or maybe even an auntie or a cousin that you can be open with and speak to them and tell them your situation and obviously maybe it's a conversation that you've got to have with this fella that he comes to your parents house and he speaks to your parents about it and you speak together you have to be quite open about this and honest at the same time obviously we all make mistakes in life but this is a gift that you've been given a gift of another life so you can preserve this life and make it one of the best choices you have and obviously do things the lawful way maybe get married and then quickly and then get have this child maybe something like that so obviously it doesn't seem that obvious but it's an option that you can take but let your parents know let his parents know, let him know and come to the final decision together because this decision is a decision for life and you don't want to mess it up. Next question. My mother-in-law is a bit of a battle axe. Whenever I'm around, she's always comparing me to her daughters, her nieces. What should I do? I'm no one to judge, but I would say that is kind of wrong of the mother-in-law. When a daughter gets married in Islam, her family to come and move in with her husband's family and obviously she's got to be on that same par as all the daughters there's no point treat i wouldn't like to be treated differently from all my other sister-in-laws i'll be honest especially a mother she should understand from a mother, woman to a woman when she was a daughter-in-law to someone they probably treated her really well and she needs to understand accept that you're part of this family as well there's no point you just being on the sideline and then there's her who's controlling everything and comparing you obviously when she's comparing you that's affecting you inside obviously it's going to affect your relationship with your mother-in-law your relationship with your husband and it's also going to affect your relationship with your sister-in-laws or your brother-in-laws whatever it is it's going to affect that so she needs as a matriarch she needs to understand that she needs to give you your rightful due to be able to understand that you're a part of that family as much as anyone else you have as much right to be treated well as much as anyone else the way to do this is through love if she's being harsh with you show love carry on showing love and one day she will crack and she'll realize how much you love and give her attention go the extra mile if that's all i'm saying is just go the extra mile every step of the way show your goodness show your good side to her maybe sometimes even questioning it but not in an abrupt way in a soft manner and just as in a jokey way you can ask her you know ask her why she's like that maybe there's something you've done or she's upset about something and you can solve that relationship speaking to someone and half the battle because we are especially as daughter-in-laws we don't want to overstep our boundaries so we just like to keep our mother-in-law happy keep our husbands happy but sometimes we need to question it especially if we're not being treated well obviously don't give it to your husband yeah point it out show him whatever but don't always bang on about it because it's just going to create arguments between you and him and that's the last thing that you want is for you two to be constantly arguing because at the end of the day a man's relationship he will always put his mom first he'll put her before you a lot of women don't understand that they always say oh he's gonna put me first no he's always gonna put his mother first just like you would put yours first and you've got to sometimes accept the mother-in-law for who she is you're not gonna get a perfect mother-in-law who's gonna kiss your feet or whatever praising you to the hills and back they have wisdom 
just like our mothers they've life experiences everything sometimes it's the way we look at it so re-evaluate it and once you've re-evaluated maybe you might see some goodness in it hope that answers your question last question is how to treat your parents islamically we say that jinnah lies under the feet of our mothers and under the feet of our dads is a, is a key to the jinnah so obviously the way you treat your parents is a big part of islam and obviously prophet ﷺ said that you can't say uff to your mother and obviously with the society that we live in we sometimes sometimes say oh mum give me five minutes oh for goodness sake oh that woman again is her again or it's him again they're annoying me whatever and what i would say is be careful in what you say because what goes around comes around one day inshallah you will be a parent as well and you will experience the same things or worse with your own kids and be careful with what you say and how you treat them Treat your parents with as much love you can give. Prophet them when he was asked um, by this gentleman, um, it was your mother three times and then your father. So like I said, your mother is the key to Jinnah. So your mum, you've got to treat her like your best friend and more and beyond. Understand that these people have wisdom. And they've experienced life more than you have they're only going to tell you to do certain things because they want the best for you you grew in your mother's womb for nine months she took care of you she fed you she clothed you she changed you when you were a baby now that you've grown up you need to return that favor to them so you need to be able to be compassionate caring supportive whatever it is you need you need to be there parents are number one family comes first you can't treat them in a bad way because all they want for you is to achieve your hopes and your dreams and like i said they want the best for you they wouldn't put you in a situation where they didn't think you could achieve they didn't want you to progress in any way they want to see you make a difference in your own life because they want a better life for you than they have for themselves and don't ever think, question what they say or do to you give them respect don't over don't talk over them don't question the choices that they make sometimes we do that without even knowing they're there to protect and nurture you so don't think that your friends come first they know you better than anyone else no no one knows you better than your mother or your father or your siblings family is the foundation of our human society where it provides you with your nurture where it's your security where it's going to be a healthy and nurturing environment to help you excel what you do today is gonna benefit your parents tomorrow so don't think that i become a doctor and i can throw my parents away no your parents became helped you become that doctor five years ago support them give them that what they need another thing is upholding family ties and this doesn't just mean that when someone's good to you that you be good back it's when even someone's being bad to you you're still being a human back to them you being in society today we always have those so-called haters or people that don't like us but we have to still be humans with them if we be the same as them what makes us different from them so you've got to have that one level up I would always say there are people out there who will always look down on you and always not support you in your dreams or aspirations but you've got to be able to look past that and be able to treat them the way you wish to be treated another thing is <clears throat> sometimes there's parents out there who are non-believers and they may ask you to worship say for example the cross or if you're if, they're, if your mother's a christian or something or your father you don't need to do that act but in all the other acts you can obey them and accompany them and help them move towards islam but slowly and gently by showing them islam one of the ways we can also honor our parents once they leave this world is by be, being friends with their friends and obviously supplicating for them um making dua paying charity for them doing good deeds because this will also this will always benefit them in their grave each parent has a particular role it's they serve you in a special way that only your na natural mother and father can provide our fathers they provide for us as an individual we will never be able to repay how they've provided for us and the only way if islamically if we could pay them back would be if they were slaves and then we set them free but that's not 
possible with the society that we live in so we need to be mindful of our father's status we need to treat them well be dutiful to their needs um hadith says that the father is at the middle of the gates of paradise so keep this gate or lose it and this is from Sunnah and Tirmidhi and obviously a mother's daraja is a lot higher because of the sacrifices that a mother goes through through the point of you being in her womb bringing you up and um, and just to reiterate that hadith that I was saying about the mother three times um, Abu Huraira reported a man asked the Prophet Sallallahu who is the most deserving of my good company the Prophet Sallallahu responded your mother the man asked then who and the Prophet Sallallahu said your mother the man asked again, then who? And the Prophet said, your mother. The man asked again, then who? And then the Prophet said, your father. May Allah bless all our parents, forgive them and have mercy upon them and assist us in fulfilling our duties towards them. Ameen. So that now, guys, brings me to the end of this very long video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned a little bit about my relationship with my husband and also giving out some general advice and some advice on parents i think i could do a whole topic on parents and islamic relationships or um let me know if you'd like to see that or if you have any ideas leave it in the comment box down below please give this th video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it like and share this video and please subscribe we'd love you to join our family and thank you for watching take care guys bye bye before we end this video, please don't forget to subscribe, like and turn the notification bell on so you'll be notified whenever we post a brand new video. Bye!